Well, uh, today we're going to talk about EcoPRT, where it is, and where it's going. My colleague he, here, Marshall Brain, he's an entrepreneur. He started six companies. Probably the most uh, notable one is How Stuff Works, eventually uh, purchased by Discovery Networks for $250 million. He's also a prolific author, having published two dozen books, um, ranging anywhere from technology impacts for the future and also describing how things work. Uh, among other things, he hosted a uh, show on the, what was it again? National Geographic. National Geographic uh, Factory Floor with Marshall Brain. And this is Dr. Seth Holler. He has uh, his electrical engineering degree from MIT, PhD from UC Berkeley around the corner. He's most famous for creating the world's smallest self-powered robot. Fits on a dime, is that correct? Yes. Is extremely small. Uh, and has links to the aerospace industry, automated uh, cars, and uh, worked in Tokyo for three years with Toshiba. So we have a, a wide ranging background. We both together co teach the Engineering Entrepreneurs Program at NC State. So we are trying to create a uh, transit system that is entrepreneurial. And uh, listening to the talks that have happened, uh, Modutran has made great strides, Vectus, uh, Transit X, I watched Michael leave, but uh, you know, hearing him talk at dinner last night was fantastic. Banks 3D visualization stuff is utterly unbelievable. It just feels like there's so much stuff going on in this, in this realm. Uh, it, it's startling compared to even two years ago. So we are here to talk about EcoPRT, which we feel is imminent. Uh, it is you know, going back to the inevitability that was just brought up 20 minutes ago. This is in that same genre. We've gotten a ton of media coverage this year. Everything from the Triangle Business Journal to NPR. Uh, we have funding levels that are increasing partly because of the media coverage we're getting. Uh, we have a, a three-phase system that is underway to get us to a full-scale system at NC State. And we feel that one of the big keys to our success has been the design philosophy we've chosen. And we'd like to talk to you about where EcoPRT is and that design philosophy. So, the starting point, I like to say it's the China Queen, but uh, that's the restaurant where uh, Marshall and I got together about three years ago and had a discussion on transit, um, which uh, eventually rolled over into what we're doing today. But um, NC State, North Carolina State University, it's, uh, it's a university that had a main campus and it expanded to what's called Centennial Campus, but it's separated by about 1.5 mi miles. And, uh, it's uh, on its master plan, it's had a transportation corridor dedicated to it, but they haven't been able to fit anything in that. Uh, initially, um, you know, they had considered PRT variants, trains, um, light rail, but uh, nothing seemed to fit that price tag. Uh, and in talking about this, what we have envisioned designing is initially specifically for that. Uh, the concept, though, isn't just for that, looking to seed something and uh, organically grow from there. So uh, the idea is once we have some success in SCSU, um, moving forward and implementing that uh, in other areas. So we'll just uh, briefly introduce the concept. You guys know all this stuff, so we're gonna forget all the background and just show you two concept pictures that paint the whole idea. The first one, this is EcoPRT in front of what's known as the Hunt Library on NCSU's Centennial Campus. Brand new library. It looks like a spaceship that's landed uh, on the field there. We have uh, two seat cars running either on elevated track or at grade. Uh, it should be noted as well, we're working with Technicon Design, um, Brent Wickham in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, Good point. Maybe about a year and a half ago, uh, we met each other. He was extremely excited about this, and uh, it's great to have a collaborator. Technicon Design, by the way, is an engineering, automotive engineering design company that works with a number of the, uh, the automobile companies, regular automobile companies in, in the world. 
and uh, has been a huge help in moving this forward. What you see here is um, our evolving design of the vehicle. Uh, two-wheel, two-person, I mean four-wheel, two-person, rubber-tired. Uh, plenty of space in the uh, cabin, but yet having that versatility for being lightweight and uh, mobile. So uh, we want to just touch upon some of the key differentiators here. I know there's um, a variety of uh, PRT flavors. Huge. Huge. Um, right. Uh, and uh, it's not to say that one system is better than the other. They certainly have different functions or utility depending on the environment, or they certainly can uh, you know, you have some overlap there as well. So the first feature, um, you know, and it was just mentioned 20 minutes ago, you lower the weight of the system and therefore you lower the cost. So we you will see throughout our design first off the shelf components, second lighter weight, lighter weight, lighter weight. So the guideway, we're pushing the weight uh, down to as low as we can take it. We're using steel construction and we're going to be at a million dollars per mile installed for single direction guideway. So um, like, we, like was mentioned earlier, you know, you could see the you know, everyone can more or less um, understand the, the graph behind me. That could be a train up there. That could be a regular road. I mean, trucks in the U.S. could be over 100,000 pounds, I believe. So, um, you know, what you're seeing is an inefficient use of a roadway. Most of the time, say a train track, 99% uh, of the time it holds nothing. And then all of a sudden, there's a point load of 100,000 pounds. What we're doing is saying, take that, distribute it more even, much like PRT systems here, and now you're dealing with only 1,000 pound loads, um, laden weight. So the second part of this is the, the cars that we just showed you. These hold one or two people because of the 1.2 average occupancy. This is perfect for a campus environment, and our target is $10,000 or less per vehicle. Uh, so, as you know, as we progress in our technology, like they were saying before, you know, the engineering feasibility of this is perfect, perfectly within this realm. Um, you know, this isn't rocket science anymore. The the sensors that are available are dropping in price, extremely so. Um, manufacturing methods, looking at designing something that is modular, uses very few parts. Um, also, composite materials for being very lightweight all combined together, you know, of course, it depends on quantity, but you can drive that cost down very low. So one of our, our first deployment will be an at-grade solution on campus. This shows you what a typical station might look like at-grade. Uh, this would be outside of one of the, the buildings on campus. So we foresee the cars running both uh, on sidewalks and so on on campus and also on these elevated guideways. You know, uh, taking it from Uber and all the other smartphone mobility applications going on, it's, it's not a far stretch to now understand that you have this computer in your pocket and you can pull up, say, an eco-PRT vehicle to where you are, uh, leveraging GPS and, and uh, the, the, the vehicle network in general. <coughs> So the third feature is extremely narrow, small footprint guideway, so we can fit it anywhere. Our guideway will be about a meter wide, single direction, two meters wide, bi-directional. It will use existing rights of way, so we can run it on shoulders or medians or greenways or power line easements or sewer easements, just about anywhere inside an urban dense core. Uh, this feature has been an extremely popular selling point when we present this to uh, different clients uh, in the marketplace. It fits anywhere. Um, this kind of uh, reemphasizes Marshall's point, both in weight and in footprint. Uh, at, at NC State, for example, you know, if you were to use a larger system, there's actually a, a railway line uh, separating some of the campus. Uh, you might have to go 26 above it as is required or do the very expensive uh, dig-in. Given the size of this vehicle, it actually can fit in nicely to where there's already an underpass for, uh, for streets themselves. You know, the, the profile here, as you're seeing, 
And this doesn't even include the, uh, the setbacks that are required for the various transit solutions here as well. Uh, it's much smaller. And you can argue um, capacity as well, but uh, adding an additional lane for this capacity really is uh, very minimal. In fact, uh, the argument that we usually present is if capacity is an issue, that's a good thing because you're making money off this and you have justification for building additional uh, network to the system. So you, you guys know all this. The basic elements of PRT, point-to-point -point access, no stops, 24-7, same thing. This is uh, one of Brent's favorite images of EcoPRT in a vacuum. So you can uh, get a view of what the pillar system and the guideway looks like. Yeah, if you were to take a hit from the, the person from Transit X, what you would want to do here is put a bunch of other clutter around it to make <laughs> it more aesthetically beautiful, I guess. Um, one thing, though, to talk a little bit about the guideways, of course, it's, uh, the big emphasis here is price, 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 reducing that total infrastructure cost so that it's not as painful for adoption depending on who you work with. And, and, and there are a variety of stakeholders from developers to reducing their, their parking requirement or maybe even leveraging another area, combining them together, and, you know, cities and municipalities as well. Universities themselves uh, have their own growing pains as we really see at NC State. Uh, given that, that price, sensitivity, you really, you know, the, the idea is to have that flexibility to, well, running it at grade or even, you know, running it amongst uh, additional pedestrian or uh, car traffic in a low speed manner. Uh, reducing the, the requirement for the, the more expensive elevated guideway. So one of our big differentiators is we are entrepreneurial. We want this system to be privately funded if necessary, governments can build it too, and that's great, but if it needs to be privately funded, it can be. So the fare we charge will cover the cost of the guideway, the stations, the vehicles, the electricity, the insurance, the cleaning, the maintenance, all of that fits into our fare structure. And we are planning on a fare that matches the federal um, cost per mile for reimbursement, 57 cents. Uh, same thing for a car. So we have designed everything to fit inside that envelope and that uh, makes it incredibly appealing from a uh, developer standpoint because it's all something that will be reimbursed through the fair. So um, you know, as I talked a little bit about before, you know, this is not a company. You know, at this moment. Um, it's, uh, it's being incubated at NC State. It's, it's, um, it, you, you talk about risk aversion in, um, you know, in the min municipalities. Uh, well, being in research, you know, there's always this effort to push towards the new, new thing or new innovation. So there, there's definitely a level of acceptance in the, the world of, of risk. The other side of it, Centennial Campus, that was created to be a business slash innovation park that puts uh, research at the university next to um, business research. And so this sort of concept of advanced future transit fits very well within the uh, makeup or the DNA of the group there as well. That combined with NC State's uh, growth and uh, future predictions for traffic on um, looking for alternative ways to move people around really does make it an ideal location to further incubate this idea. So our plan is to use NC State as a seed and then move out into the community. And we've had conversations with a number of stakeholders all across our region talking about how to use uh, EcoPRT as it spreads out from campus. So we just want to 30 seconds show you a quick uh, example of how it might spread. This is a possible uh, line on campus connecting the one library to the other about 1.8 miles apart. This is a system we did for downtown Raleigh. It hits all the major um, points of interest as you go downtown. You can connect those two systems together with about a mile of guideway. Now you have a system that can potentially have about 50,000 people accessing it and writing it, uh, it 
This is the town of Cary, which is nearby. They asked us to come design a system for them as well. You can put, this is uh, geographically accurate. This is how Cary and Raleigh and the, the mall system north of Raleigh exists now. You can connect all that together with two pieces of guideway that are about four miles long and you end up with a uh, exciting system that has hundreds of thousands of potential riders and huge utility, multiple hospitals, dozens of shopping centers, all kinds of attractions and stuff on this system. And the, the key emphasis here is having established that seed line and creating the incentives around that seed line to further build out the system. Um, we talked about three phase approach, the first phase being at grade, we're in active talks to establish that uh, first phase, working forward to, to putting something on the ground in the next year. Um, current status? So we're in motion. Our first generation vehicle is done and operational and we're using it as a test mule. We do have a test track that's operational and expanding. We have a second generation vehicle under design and construction will begin in January. We are using this phased approach to move from where we are today to a full system on campus. Yeah, you know, focused on the inexpensive aspect of it, you know, our development is very focused on inexpensive, uh, looking at that scaled phase approach uh, with incremental increase in costs. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, we really have gotten a lot of interest in it and correspondingly, uh, level of funding has increased, which is very, very exciting. Like uh, Marshall said, we're in motion for phase one with that 2016 time frame. Uh, the, the key foot, uh, idea for us is making the vehicle lightweight uh, with a small footprint that, gives us, that enables a lot of uh, you know, uh, flexibility in how the system is laid, uh, both in where it can go and the uh, construction time that it would take. Uh, the aspect of this, what falls out is kind of a low co system cost that is more of a marketplace enabler as opposed to something that uh, has very long cycle times uh, with uh, public funding measures. Um, so with that said, I appreciate your time. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much.